everyone. I'm Dr. Hank Watch from St. Vincent's Hospital, Melbourne, and the University of Melbourne. And the abstract I'm discussing here is the interim safety analysis of the sea land study from the Australasian Leukemia Lymphoma Group. Uh, this is a phase three randomized study of selenexyl and lenalidomide versus lenalidomide maintenance post autologous stem cell transplant for patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. We know the upregulation of exportin 1 is associated with poor prognosis and resistance to imids and proteasome inhibitors in multiple myeloma. Selenexor is an oral XPO1 inhibitor that's approved for the treatment of patients with relapsed refractory myeloma, and its unique mechanism of action makes it likely synergistic uh, when combined with lenalidomide based on the encouraging activity that we see from the early phase uh, uh, STOMP study. Our hypothesis is that a low-dose selenexor when combined with low-dose lenalidomide will be synergistic and will improve progression-free survival compared with lenalidomide maintenance alone post stem cell transplant for transplant-eligible patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. The study was conducted in two phases. In the initial running safety phase, uh, there were 20 patients who were enrolled after stem cell transplant, and they received selenexor at 40 milligrams weekly with lenalidomide 10 milligrams orally daily, days 1 to 21 in a 28-day cycle, and provided no grade 3 or more adverse event of interest occurred, then the patient was allowed to increase the dose of selenexor to 60 milligram weekly from cycles 2 onwards. There were two safety reviews. The first safety review occurred after the 10 patients have completed the second cycle of treatment and provided that no more than three out of 10 patients have had grade four treatment related non-hematological adverse events, then another 10 patients were allowed into the study. The second safety review occurred after, after the 20 patients have completed the second cycle of treatment and provided no more than seven out of 20 patients have had grade four treatment related non-hematological adverse events. Then the uh, randomization phase of the study was allowed to proceed uh, in which patients uh, were, was randomized one-to-one -one post stem cell transplant to receive either low-dose selenexor and lenalidomide or lenalidomide alone. Now note that even though the safety criteria were met for the run-in safety phase, after the second safety review, the Safety Data Monitoring Committee recommended that the randomization phase proceed with a cap dose of selenexor 40 milligram. And at data cutoff, there were 42 patients in the lenalidomide maintenance arm and 61 in the selenexor and lenalidomide arm. Uh, approximately a third of patients were aged 65 years and over. And you can see here that the baseline uh, characteristics were balanced between the two arms. At the time of analysis, patients had received a median of 9.5 cycles and up to 21 in the lenalidomide arm and a median of 10 cycles up to 27 in the selenexor lenalidomide arm. In the selenexor arm, the median relative dose intensity was 100% in the first three cycles of treatment. And from cycles four onward, the median relative dose intensity of lenalidomide uh, was 66% and was 50% in the selenexor arm. Uh, you'll see here that the majority of patients tolerated a median of uh, approximately 20 milligram of selenexor once a week or 40 milligram selenexor once a week up to cycle 12 and onwards. All patients had at least one adverse event in both the selenexor arm and the lenalidomide arm, but grade three or more adverse events uh, occurred in 36% of patients in the lenalidomide arm and 84% of patients in the selenexor arm, the most common of which was neutropenia, which occurred in 53% of patients and being more common in the selenexor arm. Adverse events of special interest defined as gastrointestinal side effects, weight loss and cytopenias were more common in the selenexor arm and the most common was again neutropenia occurring in 64% of the selenexor arm and 38% in the lenalidomide arm. You note here that the gastrointestinal side effects related to selenexor was most common in the first two cycles, but the incidence uh, substantially decreased from cycles three onwards and was quite manageable. 
The risk of infection uh, was uh, low, uh, with grade 3 or more infection occurring in less than 10% of patients and in around 14% of patients in the selenexal arm. COVID-19 infections occurred in 16% of patients, all of which were grade 1 and grade 2. So in summary, selenexal 40 mg weekly was generally tolerable in combination with lenalidomide 10 to 15 mg daily, days 1 to 21 in a 28-day cycle as maintenance post stem cell transplant. Gastrointestinal side effects were higher in the selenexal arm during the first two cycles of treatment and improved substantially in subsequent cycles, and these were mainly grade 1, grade 2, and were manageable. Neutropenia and thrombocytopenia were common uh, with selenexor, uh, but was more manageable with dose hold and induction. Uh, and in the selenexor arm, the majority of patients seemed to tolerate doses of selenexor between uh, 20 to 40 milligrams weekly, up to 12 cycles and beyond. And currently, accrual is still ongoing to assess whether the initial increase in toxicity seen with selenexor, albeit very manageable, uh, will be outweighed by the improved efficacy when compared to lenalidomide maintenance alone. And I think this is important given the fact that we typically see only approximately 10% of patients deepening their response during maintenance therapy uh, with lenalidomide alone. I'll end there and I thank you for your attention.